Changing things up a bit, today we're going to be counting down the top 5 worst episodes of Futurama as voted by the internet. And this was inspired by episode 9 of the revival season titled The Prince and the Product, which is officially rated the worst episode of Futurama of all time. Ranked a shockingly low 4.4 out of 10 on IMDb, this is the first time an episode of the show has been rated less than a 6. My question to you, is the low rating justified? Instead of just ripping into this episode, I thought it'd be more interesting to look at the 5 worst episodes according to the ratings on IMDb. One exception, I won't be including any other episode from the revival, where sadly one or two of them do have fairly low ratings, but that's a topic for another video. Starting off at number 5, we have Yo Leela Leela. And I was surprised to see this one make the list, there's nothing overly negative about it that stands out to me personally. I would genuinely say this is above average, where the quippy dialogue is arguably the best part. But Leela is inspired by the orphanarium she grew up in to create a fun story for kids. The only problem is that she's terrible at it. I have a question! Yes, Albert? That story was bad. That's not really a question. That wasn't really a story. Determined to create a proper story, she returns to the orphanarium armed with colourful characters and rhyming words to entice the youngsters. And this is where we are introduced to Rumbledee Hump, which is meant to be a parody of Yo Gabba Gabba, just given a dodgy name. And without seeing Leela's creative process, this seems fairly innocent at first, but things aren't always what they seem in future armour. Instead, Leela has been journeying to another planet where these characters actually exist as creatures, allowing her to write the events of their lives into a form of fiction. And coincidentally, when the orphans were listening to the story, they were being observed by Abner Double Deal. And I really like his character, designed to be a sleazy businessman, most notable for appearing in the Robot Wrestling episode from Season 2, and congratulating Leela on her creative work, he offers to make the story into children's television, which naturally becomes a success. Leela is pressured into writing more episodes, and when journeying to the planet that does contain the real Rumbledy Hump, she is caught out by Bender, which was my favourite part of the story. He blackmails her into giving him money to not spill the secrets, but eventually the guilt catches up with her and she reveals all. And while certain moments become predictable, this is not a bad episode at all. Leela tries to do something uplifting for the orphans, but goes about it the wrong way, but ironically things do work out, where Abner Double Deal adopts all the children to help run his TV show production of the Rumbledee Hump series continuing on their planet. Anthology episodes began all the way back in Season 2 with the Anthology of Interest stories, and in a world already full of possibilities, these episodes cranked things up to 11 with their creative potential. Sadly, the earlier anthologies did stop, but each run from Comedy Central had at least one similar episode, and I liked these for testing the animators and the storytelling techniques to suit alternative mediums, but Saturday Morning Fun Pit is one of the few episodes I would personally skip. This episode is a parody of Saturday Morning Cartoons, which is divided across three segments. Bendy Boo and the Mystery Crew, obviously being Scooby-Doo. Right, my runny red ass! Purpleberry Pond referencing Strawberry Shortcake, and G.I. Zap being, of course, G.I. Joe. And a part of Futurama, we have the real world where Richard Nixon, who is president of Earth, is pressured by an angry mob into changing cartoon programming intended for children to be more educational. And there's a lot of visual creativity to admire, but the Scooby-Doo story fell flat beyond a few forced chuckles. It seemed to heavily focus on the fact that George Takei was guest starring, even though he has been on the show before and in far more notable roles. Oh my. There was nothing really appealing about Purpleberry Pond, and there's likely some inside jokes I'm not getting since I have no familiarity with the source material. It just appeared to be very repetitive whilst also forcing the same gags about in-universe serial commercials. And Nixon appears to be failing at improving the programming at this point. And so for G.I. Zap, he edits the show whilst it's airing. 
And for these gags alone, this was honestly the best parts of the episode with some of the most hilarious dialogue. <laughs> Yay! I caught it! Otherwise, I feel this episode generally is a letdown compared to other anthology stories. Coming in at number 3 we have 40% Lead Belly, and this is honestly one of the most forgettable episodes of the Comedy Central run, and I say that because I had to look up the episode and rewatch it before making this video. To my surprise, this was actually a lot of fun. Delivering a convict frozen in carbonite to a maximum security prison, Bender meets Silicon Red, the greatest folk singer in the universe, getting released from prison. He has been inspired to once again chase his dream of becoming a folk singer. And interestingly, this episode was written by Ken Keeler, who wrote the second ever episode of the series, The Series Has Landed, and this is where this dream is established, so props to Keeler for actually following this up organically. I guess a robot would have to be crazy to want to be a folk singer. Foolishly, Bender tries to steal Silicon Red's guitar, which doesn't work out, and so instead the alternative is to have it 3D printed using a wireless transfer connected to his head. And I would highly recommend listening to the audio commentary for this episode where the staff become overly excited with the prospect of 3D printing technology, and that forms the core of this episode. With the guitar now in hand, Bender tries to find some inspiration but resorts to making up stories for his folk songs, the plot twist being that he is still connected to the 3D printer via the wireless transfer, and that anything he imagines becomes a reality as part of his folk singing story where it becomes 3D printed. And I absolutely love this concept, there's a lot of fun to be had with it in terms of visual comedy, However, I would say Bender has never been more annoying than in this episode. I wasn't a fan of the forcefully comedic singing, which is supposed to be bad, but it's just too repetitive and leaves the clever storytelling in the shadows. Coming in at number 2, just in time for the holidays, we have the Futurama Holiday Spectacular. And although, yes, this is another anthology episode, it does differ from what we have seen before. This time, we look at how the Planet Express crew celebrate the holiday season, looking at Christmas, Rabonica, and Kwanzaa. And I feel this episode is likely rated fairly low, with it being sort of musical-oriented. And aside from a few amusing one-liners, each segment doesn't really offer much in terms of story. One thing that I did like, however, is how each segment does have a dark, twisted ending, but nothing overly noteworthy stands out. The first segment was my personal favourite, where Fry insists on reinventing Xmas by bringing back the once-extinct Pine Tree. And it's established early in the show that pine trees were declared extinct in the 2200s, and using this piece of lore to craft a short story is something that I very much appreciate. Using seeds from the Svalbard Global Seed Vault in Norway, this is a genuine location which I had no idea even existed, but in the fiction of Futurama located next to the vault is another one carrying deadly diseases. And so Fry plants a pine tree which inexplicably is carrying germs, and this causes trees to grow out of control everywhere. And with an oxygen-rich atmosphere, Bender lights a cigar without thinking, and the whole planet goes up in flames to the robot Santa's delight. If given a B-plot, this story could have been a solid standalone episode without the need to really force it into an anthology story. I didn't really care for the other two segments where in part 2 we see Bender's selfish nature take over and celebrating Rabonica, it's tradition for two stripper bots to fight in a small pool of petroleum oil, and with none left he demands that Planet Express drill for more oil deep inside the Earth, the mission fails, and the crew are killed, aside from Bender stuck beneath the Earth's surface, and then thousands of years later the crew decomposes, becoming petroleum oil for Bender to use. Finally, we learn about Kwanzaa, with a brief musical number from Coolio himself playing at the Kwanzaa bot, and Hermes learns that he can't celebrate the holiday without candles made from beeswax, therefore he needs to fashion some candles before it's too late. Earth bees don't have enough wax, and so the crew collects wax from the space bees. And revisiting the hive from arguably one of the saddest episodes of the show, the bees are overrun with parasites, and the crew step in to save the day, only to be attacked by the bees. And I do enjoy seeing the concept of them revisited, 
but it didn't really add much to the existing lore, and aside from the first story, this episode was pretty meh, and is one that I don't really plan on revisiting anytime soon. Coming in at number one, we have what is officially voted the worst episode of the show ever, The Prince and the Product. And this one genuinely made me question whether bringing back the show for a revival in the first place was even worth it. I will say, the animation for this one as always was creative, seeing the main characters reimagined as children's toys, and it does follow a similar structure to previous anthology episodes, but the short stories did not connect to the main plot as a framing device. And ironically, I praised the series in my previous review for making Fry and Leela's relationship even more official. No longer are they on again, off again, but I clearly spoke too soon because this story makes a mockery of their relationship, and somebody on the Futurama writers team must have an estranged cuck fetish for Fry and Leela to act so out of character to this level. Each story appears to be an elongated toy commercial featuring wind-up toys, Hot Wheels, and Weebles, and there are some funny ideas presented, but ultimately each segment feels pointless and twisted by uncanny, morbid endings that retain the feeling of unfulfillment, and other than the visuals, there was no redeeming qualities to these segments at all. As the audience, I'm left guessing if I'm missing some form of hilarious satire that has gone over my head, is the show looking at how commercialism has taken over, and that we are inundated with ridiculously long advertisements on all platforms? I think I agree with the general consensus, this episode was honestly the worst of the entire run, and is definitely an episode I will not be revisiting probably ever. That's going to do it for this top 5 video looking at the top 5 worst episodes of Futurama as voted by the internet. Do you agree with these episodes being considered the worst, or are there any other episodes you would add to the list? By all means, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave me a like. And for more content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?